Stick to this important advice if you'd like to fast track your art career. All right, I've received this advice so many times, I can't even tell you. Whether it's been directed to me as like the surefire, we'll call it silver bullet, that would jumpstart my career anytime I'm in a rut, or if I've just heard it given generally to artists, like this is the way. Aside from just getting better at your art, this, this is a tried and true method. And it's really simple, but it's not quite so simple to do. And there are some pitfalls if you follow it too precisely. So stick through to the end. I will explain and I'll give you some examples of my own life, my own career, ways I've implemented this advice and also ways that I haven't. And I've been happy with both, but I think the more you know, the better you'll be. The advice is this. If you want to fast track your art career, you need to stick to a thing, a brand, if you want to call it that. Branding for an artist is not so much the way you'd think of like a logo with McDonald's or Nike or something like that. It, it's more in terms of, of who you are, but that's a really like, I don't know, in the clouds type of way of saying things. It's, it's really hard to grasp the idea of like, well, who am I and therefore how does it translate into my brand? Well, I mean, you are who you are, right? Obviously, <laughs> you are who you are. There's nothing you can change about that. You can try to pretend for a little while, but but you still are that person. I mean, you're even that person trying to pretend to be something, so that's still you. But anyway, that is part of branding, is just you, but how does that translate into how people perceive you as an artist? Well, it kind of does go back to that whole logo type of thing, like McDonald's or whatever it is, because people only know you as an artist through your art. I shouldn't say only, because here I am on YouTube, and you're getting to know me a little bit more on the inside. Aside from, from this, you or meeting me at, at a gallery or a fair or something like that, you really wouldn't know much about me, and you would base all of your guesses about me on my art. So anyway, so to make your brand recognizable, you have to stick to these things, or rather stick to two or more of them. So as I go along, some of them will stand out to you, and I want you to kind of hold those in your mind and think about your own art in, ter in these terms, and then I'll talk about them after, the, after I reveal these. So the first is subject. So can you stick to a subject? for the rest of your life. <laughs> you may not want to, and that maybe that, like me, if I think of sticking to a subject the rest of my life, it makes me want to just go get a desk job. And number two is style, and that can mean a lot of things. It could be how impressionistic versus detailed you are, or you know other more obvious stylistic choices. Third thing is color scheme. Do you paint, or can you paint, in the same say two or three colors predominantly for the rest of your life. And I keep on saying for the rest of your life, but, but we'll get to this. And then the fourth thing is canvas size. Now, if you're, if you're a digital artist, that doesn't, doesn't play into the mix quite as much. But, but having said those four things, think about those. So subject, style, color scheme, and size, if it applies to you. Can you choose one or two or even three or maybe even all four of those things that you think of when you think of your art? Could you place your art that you always do, and I say always in quotes, but can you place your art that you do in a category where you could describe it in those terms? Can you say, I paint apples in an impressionistic style and I always paint them in a combination of green, yellow, and red. And I always paint them uh, about a foot by a foot. And I like squares, kind of a size and shape could be um, in the same category. So somebody like that, somebody that paints apples in an impressionistic style, predominantly in red, yellow, and green, is that what I said, in 12 by 12, in that size category, you could even say like, I always paint on gallery wrap canvas and I don't frame them. So these are all choices, and these are branding choices. It's not, it's not just like, I just paint in my own way. I just paint with my signature style. Well, but what is a signature style? It's really hard as an artist to, to just stick to this because, frankly, the best artists can kind of paint however they want to. 
excuse me, <coughs> got something stuck in my throat there. So all of the best artists in the world can basically paint however they want. And some of, some of you and some artists out there, you might be included in this, already have found your style. You found your brand. You know, everybody thinks of you in the, in terms of this, you know, they can categorize you in those four things. They know exactly what you paint, they know how you paint, they know the colors that you, that you use generally, and they almost can recognize you by your size. And there, there are always exceptions, there are outliers in this. But if you are one of those, congratulations. If you've been able to do that and stick with it for years, chances are you don't need this advice anyway and you already know that it works. And anyway, it, good for you. You're probably well on your way to being rich and famous. <laughs> for the rest of you, and I'll include myself because I've been um, both on this bandwagon and off at different minds, times in my career, please do take this advice. It really is kind of the key to becoming well-known as an artist. And I think it goes without saying that quality is kind of the overarching thing here with, with any art. You want to be the, the absolute best you can be. If you were, doesn't matter what you paint, if, if you're super, yeah, excuse me, if you're super consistent in all these things and you're not good quality, within your realm. In other words, if you don't fit people's idea of what good quality is in that style or that realm, then none of the rest of it will matter. But if it is quality and you stick to these things, you will quickly become known as the artist. The artist, you are the artist who paints this. Uh, you'll take, well you can see a lot of my, my animals back here. So taking these other ones out of the mix, there I am. There is a recognizable artist. Uh, maybe we take those out of the mix. And you can kind of see my point here. <laughs> if you look at those, well, uh, you can even see that out there. Well, I, I paint, this artist paints women, but there's uh, not so much of a color scheme among those things. So do you see my point? So if I were just a lance, uh, uh, those aren't landscapes, those are, <laughs> if I were just an animal artist that always paints large like this on gallery wrap canvas that's never framed, I always use brown and black and white. And what did I say, size, subject, style, my style is always, I don't know, I don't know how to describe it. So anyway, if I were to stick to that and really just push that, I guarantee I could become known as uh, certainly not the painter of those things, but but one of a handful of, of painters that does those. And the more I stick to that style, the more I tighten up to the, this exact way of painting, and I never deviate. I, I Well, I shouldn't say never. Never and always are very... Uh, I, I don't like those words um, because there's almost always an exception. Almost always? <laughs> but I did say almost. But... The tighter I get that, there are lots of other artists that paint that subject and actually in that way too. Uh, at least there are a few and they're really, really good. And I, if I want to get in on that, I have to stand out a little bit. And one way to stand out is just to be selling in different places. It could be even in the same town, but in a different gallery. But I wouldn't want to be mistaken for that other artist, but I could take any two of my paintings that look relatively similar in style and in subject and size and color scheme. And it would be easy to make a case for any of those. So do I want to do that? If you're an artist and you're watching this, you have a passion for it, you're looking for ways to get better, it'd be hard for you to not do it. Hard if not impossible. And I would agree, that's, that's the way I am. I, but also, am I in it for the money? Partly. I love it, I would do it regardless. But getting back to the point, can I stick to one subject the rest of my life? Well, it would be hard. As much as I love painting, I also love painting different things. I am not, uh, person that just likes to eat one thing every day. 
although I have my favorite foods, I would probably go crazy if I had, say, shrimp scampi for every meal for the rest of my life. And in a similar vein, if I had to paint the same type of thing for the rest of my life, I think I'd go crazy. So there are some ways around this. Can I paint similar things enough to make a living? And then am I all right with painting a different subject? Maybe even, a, maybe even entirely different. Maybe this whole list would be different. Maybe in, in complete contrast to this, I would paint tiny little pictures of Roman statues in a, I don't know, I'm coming up with this on the top of my head, in a super uh, realistic way using only purple. <laughs> anyway, um, no, I, I probably couldn't do that. <laughs> Although now that I've said that, I should probably do one. <laughs> but anyway, if I, it doesn't matter what I choose, um, I, I would want to just shake things up a little bit. And I, you've seen all the different things that I do. I love plein air painting, for example. Let that be a little plug for plein air painting. If you haven't done that and made that part of your life, please do. <laughs> it's, it's so enjoyable and there's a never ending supply of subjects that you don't have to pay <laughs> or even photograph. It's so nice. It's so freeing. So could I do that forever? Could I plein air paint landscapes forever? Yeah, I probably could. But would I also want to shake things up occasionally and like use reds and oranges on occasion and be more detailed? I mean, I'm just gonna answer the question. Yes, I do. <laughs> I want to sometimes be more detailed with my representations. And sometimes I want to paint cities instead of landscapes. And often I want to paint in the mountains instead of just the, the fields and um, barns that I, that I often find myself painting when I'm outdoors. So even within that, I want to, again, just shake things up, just make it interesting. It's, it's kind of like adding a different spice to your food or just making a different food entirely. You know, we choose, say, like um, a starch and, you know, rice or uh, bread or potatoes, we'll say. If I were to always have rice and never have potatoes or a bread again, never, ever, ever, this is just for example, then if I were to keep that the same always, so I always, always, always have rice, and we could compare that to one of these four things, right? Maybe I always choose the same subject. Well, then I would vary my, my protein. I, instead of having shrimp all the time on my rice, I would have chicken something, and, and then the next day have have beef and then pork. I don't know. I, for some reason, my brain can't think of food right now. <laughs> Would that be considered boring? Well, I don't know. Maybe. Maybe I'd be, get a little bit tired of the rice. And then throw these... I'm trying, going to try to think of four things. So if I were to have rice and steamed broccoli and orange juice for every single meal, but I was going to change up the, the protein and the spices that I put on it and the sauce that goes with it. So, so that's a whole thing in, in itself. It's a whole part of the meal. So could I keep those things the same and, and just vary that and still be interested enough that it would, it would feel, feel new and, and exciting to my palate? Well, um, similarly, can I choose two or three of these things that I've said, subject style, color scheme, or canvas size, can I stick with one of those or two or three the rest of my life and just vary the protein, we'll say. We'll say that that's maybe the, maybe I could vary the, well, actually you could choose any of these. So putting this into real life examples, let's say you really like to paint impressionistically. You really have a tendency to like greens and reds. And as you look around all of your work, you, you find that, you, that that's kind of common. So your, your subject, your, or rather your, your style, your color scheme, and you generally really like something between 12 by 16 and 18 by 24, and you really don't prefer to go smaller or much bigger. Well, you've got three of those out of the way already. Three, um, I'll 
use the same fingers here. And if you were to do that, you could change up your subject every single time. And if your style was actually really consistent, you could get away with that really well. Subject is probably the, the top one. And there's a reason I put that first is subject is, is predominantly what people recognize when they, when they see artwork. And that's how we, how we categorize and uh, tell the difference between artists and we'll say styles, even though that's not style at all. But they'll look first at subject, they'll look second probably at, at style, maybe color scheme, those might be flippable. And then canvas size does have something to do with it because, I mean, that is recognizable, right? Can any of those be varied? Yeah, they can be. And there are different combinations that you could think of, I'm sure. I encourage you to write these down. So again, subject, style, color scheme, and canvas size. Write those down and see if you could categorize your current work in that. And then could you fine tune that a little bit? I, th I think it'll work for you. I really do. This has worked for me. So I went up in fame because I was following this advice and then I decided to change it up and I went down. So I've gone up in fame as I've focused on, well, like restaurant interiors. I was, I was pretty well known for that. When people thought of that subject, I was one of the few artists that came to mind. Or if they were given my name, they're like, oh yeah, he's the painter that does the restaurants. It was awesome. It was pretty easy to do that, but then I got sick of it. And I, anyway, I, this, like I said at the beginning, this is advice that, that I could do better at. And I've tried it many times and I've, I've probably had, I've built and killed my career several, uh, at least four times. <laughs> and every time I come back, I kind of focus on a different subject and even style and well, all these things. <laughs> I think if there's anything that's consistent with any of my work, it's just that I, I kind of lean towards brown as a color scheme or as an underpainting. But I think I could do better. And if you want to, this is every piece of advice that you ever receive is to be taken with a grain of salt and to be, to be fit to your situation the way you feel it is best. But I really do think that this would be helpful for everybody. If you were to take any artist that's not yet well known and get him or her to, to abide by, by these guidelines, to just stick to something, stick to these four things or a few of these four things, the more the better, um, they would almost without fail within a year or two, maybe more, but I, I would say a year or two, if you're getting your work out there, if you're trying to show it to people, then uh, I think you'll, that would make all the difference. So when do we not follow these things? Well, first of all, whenever we want, <laughs> honestly, you're the artist, you can do whatever you want. You don't have to follow any of these rules. Some rules work for some people and there are others who can go completely against it and maybe there are some success stories out there. Well, I know there are, I've heard some, but when do you not do it? Well, if you're trying to learn and if we're sticking to one thing over and over again, it's a little bit hard to learn because we learn from mistakes. And if you have this tried and true method that you always follow and you're really good at following it, then you're probably not learning anything. And you may have this impression that you're good, but you're really, and you may be, but you're not getting better in that case. So if you want to keep on learning, if you want to become better and better, then do other things that are challenging to you. And with that, another time is if you are, if you are humble enough to know that you're not that good yet and you want to learn to be better, then definitely don't kill your career before, before it even gets started by sticking to something that that you may not actually be that good at yet. So get good at something and keep on learning. And then once you're proficient, you can kind of hone it in and you know, reel it in and tighten up on your subject and everything and build a career out of that. But don't, you don't do it when you're brand new. You can have an idea with it and you can start building a portfolio 
you know, again, using that animal example, I could start, you know, if you like animals and like to paint them, go ahead and do that and start building that up that portfolio, but paint other things too and challenge yourself in a multitude of ways with, with painting those animals or whatever your subject happens to be, right? And then also just don't do this when you need change in your life. Still do it, I would say, but don't do it all the time. So that always thing, again, keep that in quotes in your mind. So always is not, not true always with, with artists. And, you know, just shake it up, like I said, uh, plain air paint or something like that, to, just to keep it interesting. So it might actually be as simple as that. I think this is like the, the golden piece of advice. If you really want to make a living at your art, just niche down, as they say. And do you know what a niche is? It's like, you know, carve out a niche, you know, a little place for an important artifact to go, for example. So if you niche down, you want to just be known as the painter of this type of thing. And then diversify in your own time. <laughs> and there will eventually become a point when you'll be so famous and so well known that you can kind of paint whatever you want. I'm thinking of one artist right now and I won't share who it is because, because I don't want you to focus on that. But he paints the same exact subject in the same exact style over and over and over again. Frames it the same way. And it's always small, well, about, eh, about yay big with a big fat frame. And then recently I've seen him do really, really, really large versions, probably much bigger than, than my big ones back there, my four by six ones. So he'll do really large versions of the exact same subject that he always does and in the exact same style, but just bigger. And I find myself, it's so funny, I find myself thinking, oh wow, that's new, when in reality it's not at all, but it's, it's funny how we think. And he's actually even more recently thrown in slightly different subjects that are still in the same style and still in similar color schemes. And I'm similar enough that it's recognizable as his still. Anyway, success story there. Uh, so once you get as famous as, as this guy, or how, whoever that guy might be, and you, you, you might know people like this, or artists like this, or know of them at least, oops. But anyway, once you get to that point, you can change things up, and you'll eventually get to the point where you can share anything, and you could almost sneeze on a canvas and it would sell. <laughs> That's the advice. So take it or leave it. Let me know what you think. Is this good advice, bad? Have you done it? Have you seen it work for others? Have you seen it work for yourself? Uh, would you change anything about what I said? Let me know in the comments. If you want to be notified of what I'm doing, new works that I've painted, or workshops that I am teaching, or classes that I'm doing, please go to my website. It's trentgoodmanson.com. And you need to spell it right. <laughs> And you can also sign up for my email newsletter, which comes out occasionally. No more than once a month, usually. I don't know. I don't have any schedule. Anyway, go there if you want to sign up. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope it offered something helpful to you. All right. Take care. I'll see you later.